The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Azavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. And, and I thought I would start the show uh, today by putting into Tiger TV the uh, chart of the Dow E-mini because we have an interesting pattern that is formed here on Friday. Uh, we have the big ABCD down that stopped right into the full moon of October the 29th, and we were expecting a rally to come at that time. And uh, I think on the show we were talking about the potential for this ABC uh, to finish, uh, you know, sometime uh, either Friday or Monday. And, of course, it did this on Friday. And it went up to the um, the CD leg was actually a 1.27 expansion of the AB leg. In other words, if you took AB and took the number of points in that swing and multiplied it, times 1.27, you would get uh, point D. There's another formula for doing that. You can add B plus C and subtract A, and that will also get you D. And if you want 1.27 of that, you just multiply, you know, the AB leg times 1.27, and you will get the same number. It just shows you the harmony that's there, but it does show the larger A, B, C, D. What's interesting is uh, the BC swing of the larger move that occurred over the past month uh, stopped up at the 786 at that 1460 level, and now we've come down sharply. And so far we've held the uh, 786 at 1401 uh, level. We got down to 1402 today. It's held it, uh, you know, relatively, you know, well so far. So, But the fact that it came down so hard, if you'll look at the same thing that happened in the sea leg of the larger move in the middle of uh, October, You'll notice that, uh, you know, we had a big wide-ranging move down, and then we went sideways for a little bit, and then we kept going down into October 29th. Well, the, the interesting thing is here we are coming into the election tomorrow, and uh, I, I know it's going to be very exciting, and I have a little bit to say on that, but it'll be very little. But the thing to remember is that we have a, a situation where we have a solar eclipse on the 13th of uh, November, and then on the 28th of November, we have a, a lunar eclipse. So both of these eclipses coming are very important. What we have to watch for, and it's, it's really important as a technician because, you know, I don't look at the fundamentals at all. What we want to watch for is if the market opens incredibly strong one day or incredibly weak, uh, that could be a tip-off for something really, really large, especially if it opens sharply higher uh, due to a surprise of whatever nature, uh, and then it starts to fail, much like it did Friday. You have to watch those days because those are the days where you can get these cascading markets to the downside, where the news appears to be really bullish, but in fact really isn't. So we need to watch that. Hopefully it will come during the time when we're on the air. But, you know, I'm only on the air three hours a week, so we've got to prepare ourselves, you know, during that time when it's not. So uh, as long as this uh, S&P can hold this 1392 level that we did on the uh, full moon uh, of October 29th, I think we're, uh, we still have a potential for an uptrend, but frankly, you know, it's looked, it gave up so much so fast, it's going to have to get it all back really, really quickly in order to, uh, you know, rectify the bearish nature of this because it's, it's quite, uh, it's getting more and more bearish as we look at these things because if we take a look at the, the New York Stock Exchange Index, you'll see that, and that's the broadest measure of, you know, stocks in the whole world because those are the largest cap stocks. Uh, there's about 7,000 of them, and these are the highest traded, the biggest volume, the highest capped uh, stocks in the world, far bigger than, of course, the Dow's only 30, but the S&P's only 500, and this is really the best one to view the overall stock market. And as you can see, you know, we, we've completed the, uh, the three-drive pattern up there in the middle of September, and since that time, we've made lower highs. Uh, we made a little ABCD Gartley pattern. Uh, that we talked about on the uh, 24th uh, of October, which I believe was the, uh, I believe that was the, uh, I don't remember what that one was, the 20, or maybe it was the 4th of October. I can't see the date very well on this, I'm sorry. But that was a, a really strong ABCD pattern that was completing, and that's when we were looking at the S&P at that uh, 14, um, uh, 60 level. So this this market is in a downtrend. Uh, it still has a potential for a uh, move up, but right now it looks like uh, that you know we are headed down. 
uh, the election uh, will come and it will go. Uh, my my wife Sarah told me a wonderful story today about um, you know the the Chinese culture and some of the um, uh, you know uh, stories that they have. And the one is it's about the chopsticks. That if you have one chopstick and try to break it, it's quite easy. If you have two, it's a little bit harder. But if you have a handful of chopsticks, it becomes virtually unbreakable. And this is what we need in our country. We need to come together. It doesn't make any difference whether you're Democrats or Republicans. We have to come together as Americans. We live in one country as one people. We have to understand that. You know, a lot of people are illegal in here. and you know That's something that we have to live with, that we have to rectify. But we have to do it as a group, not just as a Republican and not just as a Democrat. We must do it as a group. And uh, until that happens, I think we're still going to be fighting these fiscal cliffs and whatever things that we've got going. And you, know, you just can't, you know, keep giving money away. That's just not the way, uh, you know, history tells us things should be run. So that's the end of the political speech for the day. And, uh, well, one other thing I want to mention, I do watch 60 Minutes every Sunday, and they had a gentleman on who was an author of uh, quite a few presidents, and, and he mentioned about his father when, uh, when Truman got elected in 1948, how upset his father was because he was a Republican, and he said that, you know, the, um, he, you know, the world was, the United States was going to be going to hell, and Harry Truman says, well, we, we've been in hell, you just don't recognize it. And, uh, and 50 years later, right before his father died, he was said, well, we need Harry Truman back, and his son uh, reminded his dad about it, and he laughed, and that's where the story uh, is important, the fact that we, we do have to stick together and work out these problems the same. I, I wish we'd have some type of legislation about political ads because they get really, really obtrusive and boring on both sides. So that's the end of the uh, political speech. Let's get back to the technical analysis part of this. And I wanted to um, bring up the chart of Apple because uh, that, to me, is one of the best charts I've seen in uh, quite some time. All I have to do now is to find it, and then I will be uh, – <laughs> I, I had it here, and then I lost it. Ah, here we go. Uh, this is something that if you're into Tiger TV, you've got to take a look at this chart, uh, because this is the epitome of technical analysis and pattern recognition. If you'll take a look at Apple when it was making the ABCD correction down on uh, May 24th, uh, we were we were completing this at the $530 level, and we were talking about this quite a bit on the air. Uh, Basil was also, and so was Steve. This was the first major ABCD correction that we had in Apple uh, since that big run began back in 400 and something. And we'd backed off to the um, the 50% level at the $530 per share level, and as you can see, the market you know expanded to the upside, and it made a huge butterfly pattern. Uh, up at the 700 level, and then at that point, that's when you know Apple actually left an island reversal. I'm going to do this in color and show you uh, the island reversal pattern in color so that you'll be able to see that when this pattern occurs, it's quite rare, and when you do see it, that it is a pattern that really deserves your attention. And an island reversal is basically, um, you know, you, you have all prices that stay in one price for three or four days, uh, that's also called uh, the two black crows or three black crows in candlestick uh, uh, trading. But with, for, for conventional chartists, basically if you leave space, in other words, from the close to the open after this cluster of lows or highs, that's saying that you basically trap someone in at a very critical level. Well, at this level of 700 in Apple, you know, we really have had a, uh, you know, a, they've trapped a whole lot of people. Everybody that's bought this stock, you know, all through uh, August, is now setting underwater, and uh, that's not a very good sign. But but the, the, there is the chance that we have another rally coming in in Apple because we're making another A B C D down here at the 568 level, and we're about fifteen dollars away from that. But you want to wait for that level to be made, and uh, then we'll see if um, you know it should it should rally from there. Now I would recommend because this is such a high price stock, what you might want to do is to look at the put or look at the call or the put, much like we did when it was up around that 700 level. You know, we were watching the, the puts. I don't trade them very often, but, you know, you could have bought a put, uh, you know, a 620 put for Apple for a very, very cheap uh, amount when it was trading at 700. So the same question is here. When you're down around 565, you want to go up about $100. You look look for, to buy about a $600 put, which will be, uh, excuse me, a $600 call, which will be very, very cheap at that point, and that will give you a chance to do it. You only need 30 days, 
uh, because these things will either work right away or they're history. And uh, usually if you're going to do something in a call or a put, you want to risk one half of the premium that you're putting up because if it doesn't work right away, the chances are that these patterns won't work at all. That's the, the real beauty of pattern recognition is the fact that it is a leading indicator and not a lagging indicator. So uh, keep that in mind. As we get closer to that price, we'll be following it a little better. But right now what I'm doing is I'm looking to watch the uh, around the 600 to 620 calls uh, for um, – January uh, or December, either one would be okay. And then, uh, you know, that's what we'd look at. If you do the stock, you're going to have to risk 3%, which is about $15 a share. That's pretty steep for most people. So, you know, maybe you doing the call would be the uh, the better thing to, uh, to look at. So uh, we do have a chance here for Apple to make that price, and we've been waiting for that for a long time. So I think it's important that we keep in mind that this is, uh, you know, what's really uh, what's really moving these markets. Last week, uh, we want to move to the NASDAQ since we were on the price of Apple and both of those stocks. Uh, well, one is an index, of course, the NASDAQ, and the, the um, Apple is uh, 20, I believe, 21 or 22 percent of the NASDAQ. It also is uh, has completed a major Gartley pattern on the 29th of October, and we've had the move where we went up for five or six days, and then we had the big move down, but the market is still held above the October lows very, very nicely. That's telling us that that cycle low that we have uh, on that, that 29th of um, October is very important. If we break that cycle low, folks, that is uh, incredibly bearish because all you have to do is to look at that NASDAQ stock, and you'll see those little yellow uh, diagrams, these little ellipses that I made to show you the equal rallies that have occurred since the high in September. We've had three equal rallies. They were exactly equal, and uh, right after those rallies, the market came down and made another new leg. And if this happens the same way and we break below that, that's telling us that we are going you know, to go a lot lower in the NASDAQ, at least by 100 NASDAQ points, and that would, that would certainly get Apple down to uh, the price that we're looking at. Probably go, it might even fail. But this is the, this is the scenario that we're looking at here. We've had um, you know, much lower highs in the NASDAQ than we've had in the New York Stock Exchange Index. So this is where we stand. Uh, you know, as long as we're holding above this October 29th uh, cycle point, which was the full moon, uh, you know, we still have a potential to go up. Basil pointed that out uh, quite nicely on his show. He, he showed how to use, you know, some of the indicators that he uses and how they're fitting together, you know, with the patterns and that they're, they're meeting these, these ratios nicely, and that's what's important. Because the only thing you can do when you're doing this is to control the risk. You don't know which one of these is going to work and which ones aren't. That's a, that's always a coin toss. So you have to be able to control your risk, and that's the the real purpose of, you know, what we're looking at when we're when we're doing the show is to try to give some ideas on you know how to actually limit the risk. Now, also, um, we're going to have a little break here. When we get back, we're going to talk about the VIX index. If you have any questions, it's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, welcome back. Now, what we're going to be looking at, uh, if you go into Tiger TV, is the VIX index. Uh, I know that... Uh, Basil covered this in his show, but I need to cover it the way that I look at it, which is similar to what he's doing because the prices are the same. But I think the important thing to remember here is what's happening to the VIX right now uh, since uh, the middle of September is we're, we're, we're making higher bottoms. And if you go back to a little bit of history back into May and June when we were doing this with gold and silver, we were watching it every day. We were making these uh, higher bottoms, and you know we were very bullish gold and silver at that time. And that, uh, you know, led to the, you know, the big run-up to the 786 in gold. But this is what we have happening now in the VIX is that we're having these higher bottoms. Now, you know, one of these bottoms might get smashed here pretty soon. But right now, this is what's occurring. And, you know, you always hear about the importance of trading with the trend. Well, folks, the only way you can determine what the trend is, the first thing is you have to ask what the time frame is. Because the time frame on the daily is different than the time frame on the 15-minute. It's different on the 5-minute. It's different on the weekly and the monthly. So you have to know what the time frame is. And the only way that I know of that you can determine trend is you look and see if you have higher bottoms, you're in an uptrend. If you have lower tops, you're in a downtrend. That's pretty much the, the way trend is, the, is determined. So with this particular one now, we've had higher bottoms. We're starting to turn, and this means that the overall market is, is heading into a uh, weaker scenario than what we've had before. So we use the VIX index, 
you know, as the uh, things that I, I think are, you know, relatively important. Well, I think they're very important, but this is uh, the fact that we are making higher bottoms here, and uh, that's why I, I believe the importance of this index, you know, gives us an idea of, you know, where the trend, you know, could possibly be on, on these things, and that's why we're trying to, uh, you know, determine, you know, what, what is the particular, you know, thing that we're looking at. So, the other thing that I wanted to mention, and that is the fact that we've had this tremendous divergence, you know, between the uh, the Dow Jones Transportation and the Dow Jones Utility Index. You know, all of these, you know, are still showing, you know, really, really bearish signs. And uh, if you'll take a look when you get a chance uh, with the Dow Jones Transports, you'll you'll see that it actually topped, you know, way back in July of, uh, you know, 2011 when it made that big A, B equals C, D pattern up there. You know, everybody was incredibly bullish, and it was making a perfect A, B, C, D pattern up at that 5,600 level. And now we're, uh, you know, 500 points uh, below that. And what's interesting is, is that we've been following the Bradley model relatively well, you know, with the, uh, uh, the transportation. It hasn't worked very well with the Dow Jones Industrial, but the transportation has been fitting relatively uh, well with the uh, overall thing. And it looks, still looks like we're, we're in a down move. It, it looks that way with the transportation, of course, because we have lower tops all the way through 2012, for 12 months, folks. Uh, since uh, January, we've had lower tops, and that's a bear market. I don't care what anybody says. They can say it's consolidation uh, if they like. Uh, when it breaks out, then I'll say, yep, it was consolidation. But right now, it's a bear market. And if you'd have sold those rallies, you'd have been far off than, you know, buying, uh, you know, the breakouts because they all would have failed. Uh, we've had a higher bottom uh, in October than we had in May, which is a positive sign. But right now it's still in a, a, in a strong downtrend. So you don't really, uh, there's not much you can do to, uh, you know, to change it very much. And, and if you look at the uh, utility index, which had actually been higher because people were, were scrambling for yield, you know, we completed a perfect Gartley pattern, you know, back in uh, the middle of October at the 61% retracement, and now we're, we're forming an ABCD pattern to the downside, and it looks like we're ready to take out the August lows, you know, very, very soon, if that is, in fact, uh, you know, going to be happening. So, you know, I don't know what the election's going to mean, because, you know, they've got a lot of senators and stuff, but, you know, frankly, the charts don't look very good. So if there's a, uh, if there's a surprise, then we have to, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of it or, you know, wait and see what's going to, to be happening with it. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about Asia because something big is happening. We'll only take a few seconds here. But the, um, the Hang Seng Index is completing a big A, B equals C, D pattern. It's rallied about 20% off the, the, the major bottom that we had uh, way back in, uh, 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 that was September. And now we are we're coming into... Uh, uh, lunar and solar eclipses into the 13th and 28th. This chart was done by one of our uh, friends in uh, Hong Kong, KC, and he did a beautiful job of showing the resistance uh, coming in around this 22,000 and change level uh, in the Hang Seng Index. And uh, I don't know if you folks know this or not, but there's been there's being a um, the Chinese market is uh, the, actually the Chinese economy is being affected by uh, a new uh, regime change. Uh, this is something that occurs every, uh, I believe it's every uh, 10 years, and, uh, and that is also affecting the, uh, the Chinese market. We'll talk about that after the break. 877-927-6648. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides Provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now this segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, if you have any questions, 877-927-6648. Uh, I'm going to cover the Chinese market here briefly because hardly anybody trades it, but it's a very large economy, so we got to watch it. Uh, the ETF is showing that uh, FXI... It's showing that we're completing a big Gartley up in here, and there is a, a regime change in China uh, coming in just very shortly, and it is uh, happens every 10 years, uh, and we don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of turmoil, you know, going on over there uh, because of a, a few scandals that they've had, and the economy's had some, you know, really hard hits uh, lately. It's been in a downtrend for several years, and they're trying to stimulate it much like we are here, so we'll have to see how the pattern's going to unfold. But that's really what we're looking at, you know, with the Chinese market. Now, someone asked a question about a comment that I made a few weeks ago about our friend in London that had done some work, you know, showing that the Dow was going to go up into October 5th at, uh, it was, excuse me, the S&P up in a price of around, uh, I think it was 14.55. And we did hit that level on October 5th, and so far that's been the high. They asked me, you know, what his prediction was you know, from that point, and he believes that the really next, you know, re next really key uh, trading date will be on um, the 11th, of, excuse me, the 13th of uh, January, as I recall. And however, you know, none of this is based on astral things. He's doing this by a uh, geometric approach of, you know, using pattern recognition and a few other tools. But his work has been, uh, you know, quite revolutionary, in my opinion. And that's why it's, uh, you know, I think it's pretty important. Now, I want to I show you an example of what I think is happening 
with the uh, with the S and P and also with the Nasdaq as far as you know where we are in the cycle. And I'm going to post in the gold chart because the gold chart gives a very good example of what I think is occurring here. Now we made the 786 retracement up here in the gold with the ABCD pattern. I actually came in at 707 is where the AB equals CD measured to perfectly up at uh, 1794, the high was 1797. And then we came down very quietly for three weeks and we stopped right at the 382 retracement at uh, 1692, uh, just absolutely perfectly. And then we rallied for five days and it looked like this market was ready to go. But there's something really interesting that happened. And we were watching this very closely uh, on Friday because this is when it actually occurred. If you went to an hourly chart and looked at the same thing, you'll, you'll see that these, uh, the rally that we had from the uh, 24th of October to uh, Friday's high was, was a combination of several AB equals CD patterns coming in uh, exactly at the 50% level. What's important about this chart here is we talk about trend. And, you know, this had basically had higher bottoms for about six or seven days. But look what happened. Uh, if you have a chance, go into Tiger TV and see this, because if this is what happens with the S&P, this will be why, and this is why it will drop a lot. Once you break that 786 level, which is in effect around 1401 in the S&P, that's going to tell you that you're probably going to have a great deal of weakness uh, for two reasons. One is the fact that it was only a 382 retracement, and the second reason is that it came down so quickly. And that's really what you're looking at. I mean, you don't have to know anything about fundamentals. You don't have to know anything about, you know, how much gold is being mined or anything like that. You just watch to see what traders are, are doing. And once we broke below that support Friday at, uh, you know, 1704, you know, that was it. You know, they, uh, they, they, t they took that thing apart in, you know, just a matter of, uh, uh, of a few hours. And, and in fact, in one hour they dropped it, uh, you know, $15. But, the, the whole question here is the is the money management part, folks. I mean, you can be bullish on gold, and sure, you can buy it at 1705, 1707. But the question is, is when you buy it, you've got to ask yourself, where am I wrong? And that's where you've got to decide by using, you know, pattern recognition or some other form of, uh, you know, watching at, uh, you know, where the cycles are. And that's what you're looking at. So what we're watching now is for gold to come down to. Um, the uh, level of around 1660. That's the one that we were looking at, and we should be uh, watching it uh, very, very shortly uh, come in there. I believe the date will be right near the uh, solar eclipse of around the 13th of November, so that's what we want to keep an eye on it uh, for that. That's, that's my feeling on gold. Uh, you know, silver has done uh, a, almost exactly the same thing. Uh, it's showing a price that we could reach. Uh, to 2,800, but you know we've been in a really strong downtrend in silver since uh, uh, over a year ago, April, when we hit a high of uh, 49.80 uh, an ounce, and this last rally got up to 35 and change, which was the 786 retracement of the high in February, and now we're looking at a target here to come down somewhere between um, 28.50 and 29 dollar an ounce in silver as far as a potential buying opportunity. See, I don't touch that until it gets to that point. And as a matter of fact, with silver, it didn't even rally 38%. And, uh, you know, on this last rally, it rallied five days and could go nowhere. And then it broke, you know, broke $2 in, in one day. And that tells you that the weakness that is there is, uh, you know, quite inherent. And you've got to be, you know, really, you have to respect that, folks. There's no other, no other way about that. Just like the weakness that we've had in Apple, you know, even though it's a great company, it's got the greatest products in the world. I mean, these things are based on things other than, than uh, you know, what products are. It's how people perceive, you know, that they're going to be uh, viewed in the market. That's the, the main thing, you know, that we're looking at. Now, another one that's based on the economy here, and I think it's important to keep an eye on because it's such a critical level, and that is the price of copper. Uh, the price of copper... Uh, if you take a look at the, the chart in the Tiger TV, you'll see it's been in a downtrend. It's hit the 786 retracements uh, over the past several months almost uh, exactly. And uh, the, the last one is what we're looking at now is we're at a 61% retracement of the low we made last May. So we're going back for a low six months ago, and that low comes in at uh, 346 a pound. And we're trading around 347 a pound right now. 
So if copper goes below 345 a pound, uh, it's going to look very, very uh, badly on the chart. And if, and if it does start to rally, we want to see what the rally is going to look like because copper is so you know, tightly tuned to the economy. Even though it's been acting very, very poorly compared to the stock market, it still you know, gives that uh, appearance of uh, what we're looking at as far as uh, the overall economy. You know, we've got so many negative things that, that are telling us that this stock market rally is, is really bogus. And the main thing is the fact that the transportation and utility index have been so non you know, non-conforming, especially the Dow Jones Transport, which is the larger of the two between the utilities. And that, that's incredibly bearish, folks. I mean, uh, that means the goods are just not being shipped like the people say they're being produced. They've got to go somewhere. They just can't stay in warehouses. So uh, we have to watch. The Christmas season will probably tell us a lot about what these things are going to be. But uh, copper price at uh, below three dollars and forty-five cents a pound would signal that you know we're getting to go, uh, getting ready to go lower. However, the market has held its support here, and uh, it is in a downtrend and it is oversold. So there could be a uh, a rally that uh, that could be expected. So you want to you know keep an eye on that also, but. It's an important thing to keep an eye on as far as uh, the price at 345 uh, an ounce. Because, <laughs> excuse me, 345 per pound, and that's why it's important. Now, uh, I, the other one that's, that's related to the to the economy that is doing the same thing. Many of these are doing the exact same patterns, folks, and that is they come down to key support, they stop for four or five days, and then they then they just literally come unglued. And we had the same thing, you know, happening with crude oil. You know, we came down to the 61% retracement at 85.50. Uh, we rallied there for four or five days. We really didn't go anywhere. We only rallied about a dollar and a half. And then in a matter of a few hours on Friday, you know, it drops $2 a barrel. And, uh, again, it's ready. It's actually taken out the October 29th lows already. So crude oil is looking, uh, you know, even worse than um, than the gold and the silver. So these are, these are deflationary uh, commodities right now that we're looking at in gold and silver and copper and also in the crude oil. They're all, uh, they look very, very deflationary uh, in my opinion. Uh, at least they're coming down to, you know, to more critical support. So that's uh, you know, the main reason of uh, you know, what we're looking at. Uh, someone uh, asked a question uh, during the break here. Would I be buying Apple now? And I, I just went through that whole you know, scenario with Apple is the price objective that we're looking at is uh, 566 uh, per share is trading at 578. Well, that's a $12 per share uh, premium that I'm going to pay on over the price that I think it's going to. So why would I buy it at 578 when I want it to go to 566? Uh, you know, I, I think that 566 is where you got to take a look at it. And when it gets there, you know, that's the main thing you want to look at. Now, when it gets to 566, if it goes through there, you know, like melted butter, you know, like a knife going through butter. You know, then you know that this thing is really coming unglued, and it's going to uh, go down, you know, quite a bit. So you watch it at that price. Uh, that's when I usually go down to about a half-hour chart and try to find a, another pattern for support. And frankly, I wouldn't risk more than a, you know five dollars a share at that 566 level because it's so important. It's the ABCD. You know, it's the Gartley. It's the 786. It's the bada bing, bada boom of all trades. So. It's no different than the one at $530 per share that was the ABCD. So if that one works, fine. If the other one, you know, doesn't work, uh, you know, that's also uh, fine because it's just a trade. you got to go on to the next one. Remember, bears make money, bulls make money, and pigs usually lose. Okay, they get slaughtered is the old adage, I believe. The next thing I wanted to just overall view of what the overall commodity markets are doing since uh, September and I'm using the ETF, uh, the DBA, which covers quite a few commodities. And it's basically showing you that the commodities topped, you know, in the middle of September, and we've been in downtrend, uh, you know, pretty much uh, ever since. So this is what it's showing is that this, uh, this scenario of what the government, uh, what the Fed is trying to do as far as picking out, uh, you, know, you know, adding money all the time, QE3, is still not catching on uh, to the rest of the world. So that's why we, we need to you know, pay attention to what some of these commodities are doing. On this commodity show coming up next Thursday, I'm going to be doing uh, quite a bit on the grain markets because they also have had tremendous news, and yet they're not really doing very much. And that's usually a bad sign is when you have these 
you know, wonderful things going on, and it's not, uh, it's not happening. That's, that's a bad sign. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, we got about 12, 13 minutes to go here, is that we want to take a look at the U.S. dollar because the dollar is what moves everything here. And so I'm going to post into the uh, Tiger TV the U.S. dollar index going back uh, about a year, a little more than a year, and you'll see that it's completed, uh, you know, a beautiful ABCD pattern uh, perfectly uh, right up at the top at the 84 uh, level in the dollar index. And then we came down. Uh, to the 79 level, that was equal to the exact move that we came down in October. Remember what happened to Apple when it made an equal move, you know, in um, in May, uh, May to June of last year, and that's what it's doing now. Uh, same thing occurred, you know, with the NASDAQ on the rallies to the upside. These moves repeat over and over again. This is where the symmetry and harmony of the market comes into play is because these moves always repeat. There's nothing new in the markets. I know people will tell you that there is. But frankly, if you took off the price axis and if you took off the time axis and didn't tell anybody what they were trading, they would not be able to uh, differentiate which chart was which. That means they're all alike. And so this is, you know, this is the fact that we live with. In fact, this is the fact that makes it interesting, and that's our edge. We know that if it repeats, repetition is predictable, and it's also quantifiable. And so that gives us what our risk is going to be, and that's a la uh, the secret of trading. You know, you got to know what you're risking, not you know, not how much you're going to make. As hell, you never know what that's going to be. You got to figure out, you know, what what your risk is, and that's what uh, that's what the whole whole amount is all about. Um, the uh, ABC move that we're having right now over the last uh, uh, three and a half weeks in the um, the dollar index uh, should stop at around 81 level. We're very close to that level right now. And, uh, you know, this is a very, uh, it's practice had a very weak rally here at the 382. So th that means that the, uh, that the U.S. dollar is probably going to, uh, you know, be ready for, you know, some pretty support here. But we want to take a look at the euro on a, on a little bit longer term basis here. We're going to go take a look at it on the daily basis. And as you can see, you know, the high that we made in September, we were talking about that 131 level because it was the, 786 off the February high of 2012. It stopped exactly there at 131.36. I believe the high was 131.49, as I recall. And now we've had lower tops. We completed an ABCD Gartley again at 131 and change. Uh, that was almost a perfect double top. And now we're starting to break down, and it looks like we're ready to take out uh, the September lows. I believe we took out the September lows a little bit earlier today, and so that tells us that we're looking at, you know, a potential for this market to really start to come down. And the other thing that's important here is the action that we had Friday. We had a very large move down. So that long-ranging bar is telling us that this euro, you know, wants to, uh, you know, break down uh, even a lot more. So these are things that, uh, you know, you, that we watch to give us an idea if, if the overall thing that we're looking at is correct, and if you, you know, look at the stocks, and you look at the commodities, and you look at the currencies, it looks like you know we're we're heading to for a pretty severe correction here uh, in the stock market. Now, if we go below 1,400 in that S&P 500 in the next day or so, uh, even today, I think you're going to start to see accelerated uh, selling. Got to take a little break here, and then we'll uh, finish up the uh, finish up the show. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back with the conclusion of the show. Uh, I would like to uh, end the show here with a little comment about the bond market. I put the chart for bonds uh, because we are hovering at the 786 uh, level that we made from um, way back in early September. Uh, you know, we hit that 149 level. I do believe we're going to get above that eventually. Um, but the question is whether we back off here for a day or two. But the thing that's important here is to remember that in 1999, uh, Japan had been in a 10-year bear market. Their market topped in December of 1989 with the Dow, with the uh, Nikkei Dow at almost 40,000. It was 39,000 and change. And then for 10 years, they went straight down and they hired a a very influential college professor from Princeton University to help them out of their quagmire, and he recommended that they, you know, inflate their economy by, you know, do quantitative easing. Well, that gentleman's name was Ben Bernanke, and as you can remember that the uh, Japanese have been in uh, 10 more years of a bear market, and it's been 20 years now, a little more than 20 years, and nothing's really happened. So it didn't work. And if you want to see someone back out of something, just go into Google Bernanke in Japan, and you'll read all the articles that he wrote and, uh, and then how, how he tries to, you know, back out of them, you know, basically said, well, uh, they just didn't do enough. Well, how much is enough? I mean, you're just going to print money forever? And it didn't inflate them. It deflated them, you know, and, of course, they had lower interest rates. That led to that the monster carry trade of all times where you could borrow Japanese money for virtually nothing and invest it in anything, and that's, that's what happened. Now, whether that happens to us or not, we'll have to wait and see, but... You know, the rest of the market, the rest of the world's markets, 
will react to this. You know, they, they can play games with it for a while, but for long periods of time, I'm talking months and years, uh, these things will come to, uh, you know, go back to what normal economics of supply and demand will tell us because interest rates that are kept down too long uh, will eventually go up too high. This is what happened. We've been in a 30-year bear market in interest rates. They've been going down for since uh, October of 1981, and, uh, you know, how much lower they're going to get, I don't know. But history says that we will repeat. We got a call from John in Philadelphia. John, are you there? Hey, Larry, thanks for taking the call, sir. My friend, what can I do for you? Hey, a uh, real quick question on soybeans. Sure. Uh, I know you watch this uh, intro week. Uh, soybeans, the Jan contract made a high at 1576, I think it was a week ago, maybe two. And uh, now it's uh, pulling back deeply. Looks like it's an ABC down that may be completing. Uh, it's currently 1512, and the FIB 786 level is 1505, just $0.07 cents lower. My question is there anything that you're seeing in the daily charts that would tell you don't try to buy it? Uh, well, uh, I, I, yeah, I, the, the strength of the downtrend, you, you, you said it when you started here, you know, the fact that, you know, it's had a pretty good move down. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's uh, not acting very well is, is a, uh, you know, that, that strength of that down move we had on Friday and then it's continued on today. It's, it's reached its really critical support today at the 786 level. There's no question about that at the five uh, you know dollar per bushel level, but with that big strong day that we had down, I, I would wait a day or two, uh, you know, before I would even uh, try to buy this. But it does have some support here at five dollars. And in fact, what I'll do uh, on uh, Thursday's show, John, is we'll look at uh, the meal oil together along with the beans, and we'll see if this. Uh, you know, pattern is actually going to hold it, you know, pretty well. But right now, it looks like, uh, you know, that uh, $15 level must hold. If it doesn't hold, you're looking at uh, much, much lower prices in soybeans. Thank you very much for the input, Larry. It's my pleasure, my friend. I hope Philadelphia weather keeps you nice and warm this winter. <laughs> okay, folks, uh, we're going to be wrapping up the show here pretty soon. But the main thing to watch is the S&P going below 1,400. That's a bad thing. May God bless and live every day in an attitude of gratitude.